Hey, Tragic here, and welcome to Mage Knight. This is going to be my first playthrough in a long time. So, let's get into this. We're going to try and do two rounds of video, and not to fill it up with fluff. Now, Mage Knight, as you know, is one of my favorite games. I play this game all the time, and have for years now. Which is a good and a bad thing. It's good because... I love playing it. It's bad because, you know, you get used to just not looking at the rules. So I'll be very <laughs> interested to see if uh, I make tons of mistakes. So uh, I'm going to play with my two favorite mage knights, Wolfhawk and Etheria, or whatever the witch's name is called. And then I'm going to random the last two. You blammo. And you blammo. Oh, Norway's. No, I don't want to play with him. Okay, Goldex. Fine. Randomish, I guess. <laughs> and I'm going to play Dungeon Lords, which is probably one of my favorite scenarios in the base game. Uh, and the reason. For that is it's just a really fun scenario it encourages uh lots of high risk combat and it's a competitive one because i mainly play competitive with other people uh i seem to be well me and my friends seem to be very alone in the opinion that the competitive game of mage knight is way better than the co-op i think the co-op is pretty dull but the competitive modes and the solo modes are fantastic and this is just a really cool scenario i think anyway let's uh, get into this we're playing a four player game so we need 11 country tiles now we've already put two in what we did at the beginning there is that we just took out we put into the the pool all the tiles that had dungeons on them so there's one dungeon in the core set there's two dungeons in the country tile set and this quest requires that you have to use the blue city so it requires 11 tiles but we've already put in two so i've just set it to nine and we don't have any city tiles and we just put in two core tiles because even though it asked for three we've already put in one so we'll just uh build the map pool nice and over here i'm going to turn on shades of tesla and we're going to play with all the tokens could put competitive on and i'm also going to play blitz which is uh you know just for fun because just makes blitz just gives you an extra mana makes it a little bit easier okay so that's that. Let's uh, clean up and start. It'll build the token pools and set everything up for us. Now the initial setup is a little bit convoluted still. I mean, this is Mage Knight after all. Let's get rid of that hand. And now we just disable the hand so I can see everything. So even though we're playing like multiple hands, we are still going to be uh, playing proper competitive. So I'm just gonna chuck the competitive skills in and the co-op skills out. Okay, and let's just roll the dice. Let's see what we've got. So, this is an unacceptable source roll. The rules of the source roll is you've got to roll until you have uh, under half of the dice are special. Now you can just keep rolling, but sometimes you just roll forever. So what I like to do is just roll the special die. And that's a lot easier. Oh, look at that. Terrible. Two blacks. Anyway, that is that. So now we've only got two special die, which means that we aren't, it isn't over half. So we have to keep. 
Okay, and this is a open map. So we'll just pull out the initial tiles. Bam, bam, bam. Now the rules of this one are a little bit unusual. Basically, every time a village or a monastery is revealed, we have to place out a dungeon. And each dungeon is linked in a big underground cavern. And you can travel through the dungeons for super fast travel around the map and stuff. So there's two villages here. There's one here and there's one here. And what that means is that two dungeons are going to be placed there. So like we take a dungeon and we put it here, or we can put it here or here or here. It can place, be placed anywhere except a swamp. I think it's just a swamp actually. Uh, if I remember correctly. Non-swamp space. Yeah. So it's anywhere that's not a swamp it can be, be a dungeon. And it's placed by the person who places the tile. So the way I, or the way we play, is that the first player, right, gets to place any opening dungeons, which is a huge advantage, which makes people really try to get that uh, first player tactic, which with the number one that has no abilities, it's sort of like a balance. Okay, so that's that. Now over here, we have the initial turn order for picking our tactics. So we'll just do our tactics. And let's have a look what we got here. Gold X, oh, Gold X is over here. Okay, Gold X has quite a bit of movement and a, quite a bit of combat actually, but he's got no way of drawing extra mana. Because remember, this is the opening salvo, so we don't have a lot of power. But he does have a lot of movement. He's got four movement. Six, I guess, if you count swiftness. Now we do have blue and green mana, so all the movement is powered. Which basically means he's going to take the first tactic and make sure he gets early purred and goes first. Meanwhile, Wolfhawk. Wolfhawk also has tons of movement, but he's got plenty of mana manipulation because he's got concentration and he's got mana draw. So, oh, let's flip these things over. Six can get to here. Hmm. God, it's a really slow start with these big massive swamps at the beginning, isn't it? guess this is the best path. Now this is an open, so there is an exploration point here. So coming down this way is a lot more viable with this type of map. You still have to get past here. That does give us a gold. In fact, that's actually a pretty good start. So that is uh, five, six, seven to get into there, which we can actually do. So I think we're going to take a mana steel and take a green. And that means we're assured of getting a power up for concentration. Now it is this bloke's turn to choose. He has a terrible hand. He's got only two movement and nothing else. Oh, he actually has Druid Pass as well, beg your pardon. And there is blue. There's one blue. But there are two people going beforehand, so the chances of that blue being there later on is pretty low. Uh, I think he's going to take wreath, uh, planning. Planning is uh, a very, very good card, and it pays off in later turns massively. And that doesn't leave much for poor old... I can never pronounce a name. I just call it Etheria. I don't really know what her name is. She has tons of movement and some mana draw. So I think she's going to take Rethink. Okay, so she's going to take Rethink and she's going to shuffle one, two cards back into her 
hand. Okay, so that's the opening salvos. We have what uh, gold X is first, then we have rethink. Uh, mana draw and planning. So that is our new turn order. I'm just going to save this because we're ready to start. And finally, this is just something I like to do is I'm going to color the hands so they match the Mage Knights that will make him. Okay, and that's that. We are ready to rumble. So I'll see you in the first turn. And uh, everything will go according to plan. <laughs> okay, that's that. I'll see you guys next one. I can't remember what I said to say goodbye. Oh yeah, see you next time. <laughs>